So I, I, if God has given you the gift of company, if God has given you the gift of family, he has given you one of the greatest gifts on earth. Amen. Shout amen. Would you rise up for the reading of God's word? It's a tradition here at Omni Present Church that we read the opening word, the word standing up out of respect to the word. The word is powerful and the word is living and active. And in fact, the reason why we do this is so we can remember that particular emphasis or anchor scripture. There are anchor scriptures. Whether we pray in the morning or we or we preach about a topic, there's always an anchor scripture, a, a focus scripture that we can use to navigate and explain complicated concepts and teachings. So our anchor scripture this morning is from the book of Exodus, the 33rd chapter and verse number 16. If you're there, shout amen. And if you're not there, say, wait for me. Amen. Praise the Lord. The 16th, the 33rd chapter of Exodus, we're going to focus on the 16th verse. But I want us to go to verse number 12. Then Moses said to the Lord, See, you say to me, bring up this people. But you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name. You have also found grace in my sight. Now, therefore, I pray, if I have found grace in your sight, show me your way, that I may know you, and that I may find grace in your sight. Pay attention there now. This is, this is a pattern of scripture that I want you to pay attention to. God has just sent Moses on a mission. And Moses understood the mission. But he's doing something that only sons in the kingdom do. He's taking God's word and putting it back to God. And demanding that God make good on his word oh God when you are growing up as a child of God if God tells you I love you you just run with it he loves me my father loves me my daddy loves me if you receive any word of prophecy from God that's just good enough for you you take it you believe it you're excited you run out if there is any kind of inspiration any kind of word that comes to you that God is bringing to you in your heart. If a prophet were to speak to you and say God is sending you on a mission. The young people in Christ will just be so excited and so passionate with the word they've just received. that they, They'll run out to the mission field and begin to want to do that which they've just received. But here we see a man who has gone through the school of sonship. Who has understood that the mission alone is not good enough. That the word of prophecy alone is not sufficient to bring you from the place of promise to the place of providence. That you need proof of the word. That you need confirmation of the word. That you need to spin the word of God back to God. And challenge God to act on his word. He said, if I found grace in your sight. Now do this and this. So I should know that I found grace in your sight. Because the word of God should not be poetry. The word of God should not be poems. The word of God should not be just there to just to romanticize your ears and, and, to, and to fan your ego and, and to make you feel good about yourself. The word of God is supposed to transform you and bring about a change that everyone around you can see for themselves. 
If I have found grace in your sight, do this for me that I may know that I have found grace in your sight. Show me your way that I may know that I have, may have, I have found grace in your sight. And consider that this nation is your people. And God said, my presence will go with you and I'll give you rest. You see, I, I love how God speaks. He doesn't give you all the details. He sends you in the war front and he tells you, you're going to win. Just go. I'll be with you. And, and most of us will just go by faith. Moses was not a man who operated by faith alone. Moses was a man who asked questions. God is not afraid of people who ask questions. God is not afraid of those. He can handle your questions. The more questions you ask, the more answers you get. If Moses had not required of God, had not requested of God to show him his way, he would never have received insight into the way of God. A lot of people just know the works of God, but not the way of God. Shout amen. The babies know about the works of God. They know about you know, the givings of God, the gifts of God. God gives you a little chocolate. God gives you a little blessing. God gives you a little provision here and there. That's all you care about. But the sons, the sons, those who have come to maturity, don't just care about the works of God. Because they understand the works of God is for the babies. They want to understand the way and the will of God. Show me your way. If I've truly found grace in your sight. When surrounded by the thickness of darkness. In a world where you don't understand the way out. When your life is encircled with all kinds of uncertainties. And you don't understand how you may come out of that phase. If you can only ask the Lord Almighty. To prove his word to you. And to show you the door out of darkness. My brothers and my sisters. Because even in the midst of the darkness. There is a way out. But the problem is a lot of us don't ask enough questions. We give up so easily. Instead of asking the right questions. When there is lack. When there is problems, challenges around you. It is opportunity for you to ask questions. Ask your father a question with respect and dignity. Say, God, teach me that which I do not know. For I don't understand the mechanism of this problem. But open my eyes that I may understand. Let the eyes of my understanding become enlightened. And God will send rays of light your way. God will send rays of light into your spirit. And your soul will catch a glimpse of inspiration. And then you will know that even in the midst of the darkness, there is a way out. Somebody shout amen. Somebody shout amen. We don't need to ask God to make a way. We need to recognize that God is the way. And so when you're stuck in darkness, he's there with you. We have to ask him, show me your way. I don't just want to know about your promises, about the prophecies. I want to know your way. And then God did something that he never done before. He promised his presence. Omnipresence. My presence will go with you. My brothers and my sisters, Kalabaratosia. If you continue on in verse 15, 
Now God said, my presence will go with you and I'll give you rest. Look at what Moses did. Some of you say that Moses had a speech impediment. That's what you think because he was repetitive. He liked to repeat himself. If you say something to Moses, like a parrot, he will turn it around and speak it right back to you. That was Moses. So God just told him, my presence will go with you and I'll give you rest. And see what he said. Then Moses said to God, if your presence does not go with us, <laughs> if your presence does not go with us, do not bring us up from here. For how will it be known that your people and I have found grace in your sight? It's going back to what God said before. How will it be known that your people and I have found grace in your sight? Except you go with us. So we shall be separate, your people and I, from all the people who are upon the face of the earth. So the Lord again said to Moses, I will do this thing that you have spoken. For you have found grace in my sight. And I know you by name. Moses was not a man who believed in saying amen. God finished talking. And he kept talking. He says, please show me your I love that man. Some of us will be happy to receive a wind that is coming from the direction of God. If God were to send a wind and that wind is labeled from God, you say that's enough. But here was a man who God was saying things to and he was taking God's word I'm forcing God to say even more. Because whatever God says, he is now committed to doing. So the more you can get him to say, the more commitment you have from God. Shout amen. Somebody shout amen. It is dangerous to rely on your mission alone. Sooner than later, the little you have will run out. So when you're faced with uncertainties, with darkness, my brothers and my sisters, you must sit down first of all and ask yourself, not just what is this darkness, but what is the context of this darkness? You must ask yourself, not only what is the size of this darkness, but you must ask yourself, where is this darkness coming from? You must ask yourself, not just when did this darkness come into my life? When did this uncertainty come into my life? You must also ask yourself, how did it come into my life? You're facing darkness, a wind of uncertainty, confusion, and chaos. You must ask not just what, but the context, not just the size, but the location. You must ask not just when it came, but how it came. Darkness does not remove all possibilities of light. Your uncertainties and your questions and your doubt do not eliminate all the possibilities of answers and clarity and light. Doors, inspiration can still be located in the midst of darkness and uncertainty. Even in the midst of darkness, when your eyes can see clearly, my brothers and my sisters, your ears are still active sounds can still be heard so what you cannot see clearly you may hear clearly oh god 
Moses couldn't see the way out of where he was. He could not imagine it. And he was not just going to pretend like he got it. And so he relied on that which he had. You have to rely on that which you have in abundance to mitigate, to reduce the size and the magnitude and the effect and the impact of that which you have in little. You have to rely on the resources that God has availed to you now to make up for the want and the lack in your life. You have to start where you are, with what you have, with who you are. Where he could not see, he could hear. And so he relied on the sand code from heaven. He had to get more of it. And so he kept speaking. And God kept responding. And as the direction of God was coming to him by a sound way, light was entering his spirit. Strength was coming to his soul. Faith was being brought in him. Clarity was coming to him. You must not just count your deficiencies. You must not just believe in your defect. You must begin to see what seed is available in your life. You must begin to see the possibilities that exist even in the midst of darkness. Because my brothers and my sisters, the darker your situation may be, the brighter the hope of glory. Somebody shout amen. Even in the midst of your darkness, strategies can still be devised. Ideas can still come. God can still answer your prayers. Shout a big amen. So how can I be sure that God will show up for me in my darkness? How can I be sure that God will come through for me? How can I be sure that I won't just stay here and rotten? How can I be sure that I'm not forgotten and forsaken by God? How can I be sure that this season of pressure is only but temporary? How can I be sure that there's a better tomorrow for me and my family? How can I be sure that this darkness will not disintegrate me? How can I be sure that this won't take my head? God has a pretty good track record of keeping to his word. And when you think that God has forsaken his words, my brothers and my sisters, you remind him of that which he spoke to you. You remind him of that which he declared to you. I say, God, if I found favor on your side, if indeed you've anointed me, if I have the Holy Ghost, I have possibilities in me. And therefore, if I have possibilities in me, let there be doors opening unto me now. Let there be light in my way. Because God is a God of light. And he said in his word, let there be light. And when he speaks light, light comes into existence. Shout a big amen. He has a pretty good track record. God has a pretty good track record of keeping to his word. Shout amen. And while you're there in the midst of your darkness, not sure of how tomorrow will come about, not sure of how things will pan out, don't waste your time. Don't waste your time. Invest your time. My brother Adam read from the book of Genesis chapter 50 in the morning about the man Joseph who was stuck in the land that was not his land. He was sold into slavery. And he had all the time in the world to complain about how difficult his life was. But while he was still there in the, in the midst of his suffering, he built his character. And he had the opportunity of messing up, of, of selling out his God-given talent for pleasure. He had the opportunity to give in to the demands of culture 
in his days. But he said no and chose to be clean before God. Sooner or later, Joseph was elevated from being a prisoner where he was put into unjustly. He went from prison to the palace and became the authority in a foreign country. And we read about this gentleman. And when he had the opportunity of taking revenge, of taking vengeance on those who sold him into slavery, those who frankly wanted him dead, when he had the opportunity of getting even with them, oh, oh, even the thought of it just ripped his soul. He cried out and said, what? Who do you think I am? To take vengeance on you? Can't you see what you intended for evil? God has turned it around. He began to preach to them. That God used the adversity that they gave to him. That God used the pressure that they generated. That God used the curse that they threw at him. That God used the weapons that they fashioned against him. That God used all these things to lift him up. And to prepare him. And to elevate him for a time and a purpose. That is a man... Who spent time quite all right in darkness. That's a man who stayed in obscurity. That's a man who buried his head and built character. That is a story of a man who has developed himself. Who has gotten rid of the animalistic tendencies. A man who has grown in love and peace. And oneness with God. But who can understand and forgive. Without even being asked. This is the story of a man who did not waste a moment of his time in darkness. God allows darkness to come upon you so he can shield you from exposure because premature exposure will kill the best of God's gift in you. He's incubating you. He's covering you up. Allowing you to have time to make your mistakes and to tarnish yourself in your mess and allow you to grow out of it. So that by the time the light comes upon you, you're ready for prime time. And some of you, instead of building your character, you're complaining about why God is not allowing you to be on top of your game. Meanwhile, God is trying to keep you from killing yourself. That's premature exposure stifle the gifts of God in your life. No matter what you're going through right now, that is an opportunity to take a break and build your character. Let me tell you something. You don't know who you really are what you're capable of doing until the right circumstances present themselves. You don't know how depraved and wicked in your man you can be until you've hit money, power, and influence. If you're still poor and you claim to be a good man or woman, you're kidding yourself. You don't know that. Until God allows you to touch money, power, and influence. You cannot really demonstrate that you've learned humility and goodness. So he keeps you in obscurity to build the foundation for this character. So that when the light of God comes upon you, you're ready for prime time. Stop fighting the darkness. Stop wondering why you're still struggling with the same mistakes, the same sins of yesterday. Just make up your mind to use it as your building blocks 
for a brighter future. That's what God expects of you. Rise up on your feet. Let us pray. Miracles happen with the right mindset. Deliverance happens as a byproduct of preparation. Growth is never something that happens in a vacuum. Growth happens by the application of an external force of pressure that applies to you and that forces you to go into through some kind of metamorphosis. Pressure forces you to change direction. It, it forces you to change your scale. It, it, it forces you to change your shape. Pressure does this to you. God is allowing things to happen in your life. Change your shape. asking God to do something you've been asking God to move in your life let me ask you a question are you really sure it is God's turn to move how can you be sure that God is not expecting you to make the next move and while you're there accusing God of not moving God I wish you can do this God I wish you can do this and all he's asking you is when will you use what you have to get to the next phase of your life? Everything you will ever be tomorrow, the seed is in you right now. Don't waste your time. Build your courage. Build your place with God. Solidify your relationship with the Holy Spirit. Become familiar with the principles of truth. Would you pray to God and pray? Would you pray to God? With all your heart, with all your spirit. If you feel this morning like kneeling down, you can kneel down. If you want to sit down, you feel free. If you want to lay down, feel free. If you want to stand, that's okay. Just spend some time freely before your Father. Ask Him for mercy this morning. Repent from sins, mistakes, atrocities, deviations, inconsistencies, unfaithfulness disobedience. I love the story of Joseph. He was a man to be emulated. He would not give out his eternal glory for a temporary gain of pleasure. Oh God, strengthen me by your spirit. Strengthen my resolve. By the Holy Ghost, empower me. Let the Spirit of Joseph be manifest in our lives. In the name of Jesus, strengthen us, O God. He can debo sakabala fais kabu shepherd is kanabalia. He kada di babasi kara. Let's go before your father. Talk to him this morning. Ask him for mercy. Oh, seek it, God.